YouTube, what's going on? If you're new here, my name's Roger. I own a company called QBO Tactical where we make holsters and gear and also film content for this channel. In today's video, we are taking a look at a new accessory that I have added to my everyday carry gun, which is the Zevtech OZ9X. I'm talking about the Mayhem Syndicate Carry Comp Mark II and Barrel. Now, as always, I like to tell you guys how I go about getting these products in for review. Uh, Mayhem Syndicate came out with an awesome compensator for concealed carry, and not just because it's so small. Um, you'll see what I mean here shortly. Anyway, with that being said, they can't keep these things in stock, so I hopped on their website and selected the black nitride finish. I paid the $375 and got the wait time going for the 10 week lead time. Uh, luckily, the comp and barrel came ahead of schedule at the eight week mark, and here we are. So if you're familiar with the channel, then you know that I'm a fan of compensators on handguns. I'm sure all of you have seen our videos on the STI DVCP, the STI Open, um, the SIG Legion with the Parker Mountain Machine comps, both the single and the dual ports. Uh, and now we have this video, the Carry Comp Mark II from Mayhem Syndicate for my Zev. Um, the one major thing that I wanna make sure that I answer in this video for everyone though, is if the comp really works and if you get one, will you feel and notice a reduction in recoil? Um, if that's what you're here for and that's all you're here for, I can tell you right now, yes, it works. However, there are other contributing factors to how well it does perform, um, like ammunition choice, for example. So let's get to the specs. The Mayhem Syndicate Carry Compensator Mark II is a small, compact compensator designed to work specifically with their barrels made in-house. Um, I'll explain why. You see, their Carry Comp utilizes their quick lock system, which allows you to install the barrel and compensator in under 10 seconds. But wait, it gets even better. Um, you don't need any tools, you don't need any Loctite, no special screws, no worrying about the compensator coming loose. Um, and I'll show you what I mean in this video clip. Now, I chose to go with their black nitride barrel, which is a match fit barrel with a one in 10 twist. Um, and now I wanna repeat something also so everybody understands. You need to use their barrel in order to use their compensator because of the size of the compensator and the threads. Um, the other thing that you'll need to look at is the detent that is in place on the barrel. So don't get me wrong, um, if you're a machinist, you could most likely make your own barrel to match theirs, but they also don't sell the compensator separately, so it might just be a waste of time. Okay, with the specs out of the way, let's get on to the range footage. Um, now, I've been itching to get out on the range and shoot this thing so I could start carrying it. Um, I actually got it about two weeks ago, but then I got sick, as many of you know, so I wasn't able to get out to the range sooner. I did take it out to zero it before I got sick, though, and I ran about 250 rounds through the gun with some 115 grain ball ammo, and I did not experience any issues. Over this last weekend, I started feeling better, so Eric and I headed out to the range and ran some more rounds to the gun just to make sure that it functioned flawlessly before deciding to carry it in my EDC gun. I'm happy to report that we did not experience any malfunctions or issues with the compensator or barrel. Um, I was a little confused at first, though, with the zeroing process, and I'll explain what I mean. When I first went out to zero, I noticed that my shock group was a good five inches to the left. Um, I adjusted the optic, which is the Trigicon SRO accordingly, and I was able to get a solid zero at 25 yards that I feel comfortable carrying the gun with. Um, I will say that standing and shooting at 25 yards isn't the easiest for me when I'm attempting to get a zero. I normally end up bench resting the pistol, but I have also found that I don't always get the tightest groups with this method either. So I'll definitely have to look into a better zeroing method for the future. Anyway, I filmed this video portion on the range so that everyone can see the types of groups that I was getting with this setup. All right, guys, so like I mentioned earlier in the talking point, um, when I was getting a zero for this gun from the original factory Zev barrel to this Mayhem Syndicate comp barrel, uh, I had about three to five inches of uh, shift to the left. So I did get it zeroed at 25 yards where I feel comfortable at. That's where I zero my, uh, my handgun red dot optics. Um, however, I'm not the best person to keep my hands that steady at 25 yards, even bench resting it. So uh, I got the zero as best I could on a zeroing target at 25 yards, and now I'm gonna show you guys from seven yards. I'm gonna shoot a uh, four round group at the head and we'll go take a look, all right, stand by. Four rounds. And let's go up here and take a look. <clears throat> so first shot was me jerking it and then starting to climb up and then I got two touching. So, and then this was us earlier when we were doing those three round shot bursts. Uh, we're gonna do one more uh, group in the center A zone from seven yards. Let's go back as well, do that again. 
I'm gonna do it nice and slow to get a tight group, and then we can go take a look. Stand by. Cool. And one, two, three, four. So to me, the group is tight enough, uh, seven yards. Even at 25, I'm still hitting um, on, on a silhouette that's the size of a human, like on, on, on A-Zone steel as well. So uh, definitely think that it's worth carrying if you worry about the accuracy part, which is my concern when I had that shift. But um, I even talked to the guys over at Mayhem Syndicate and they had mentioned that they noticed that there was uh, a bigger shift when coming to the zero in regards to the Zev guns over just the standard Glock. But uh, got it moved over with the SRO, zeroed it in to this barrel, and we're shooting 124 and 147, getting the same groups. So there you go. All right, guys, and just to give us a little more confidence while carrying this compensator as our everyday carry, uh, I got the mini ADAP steel target from uh, TA Targets. As you can see, it is a modified uh, miniature A-Zone steel target. We're going to go back to 25 yards where I zeroed the gun at, and we'll shoot it from there. Let's head on back. So yeah, here at 25 yards, shooting that mini A-Zone steel, the mini ADAP from uh, TA Targets, definitely makes me uh, more confident with my Zero, especially uh, running this new barrel, new comp setup. Um, running the SRO from Shijikon, that's I do like that optic. I was worried about carrying it, um, but I went to a match, dropped it hard. I mean like, flipped, rotated, landed on the top of the SRO, and it was fine. So that and on top of that, um, I will be throwing on the, uh, the BROS, I believe it's called, from, uh, from Jaeger Works. That's like a little uh, stainless steel, uh, metal covering for the uh, SR optic that they created as a protection. So anyway, I'm gonna have Eric and Paul also run it here at 25 yards so you guys can see somebody else shoot it. Now after shooting that portion of this review, I'm definitely confident in the grouping with the setup and I feel good about carrying it. Uh, being able to hit that small mini ADAP steel target at 25 yards consistently is definitely a confidence booster and it does put my mind at ease. Um, I tend to get a little worrisome when I start adding different things to guns that I use for self-defense. So if you're like me, I would definitely go this route and I recommend that you take the setup out to the range, run a few hundred rounds through it, make sure there's not gonna be any issues because in my opinion, you don't wanna discover that there are issues with your setup when you actually have to use your gun for self-defense. Again, that's just my opinion. Uh, anyway, moving on. Another thing that I thought about with running this compensator for everyday carry was what if I had to shoot from retention? I was thinking about the dispersion of gas and how it would affect me with the gun being so close to my body or face. So I ran a few drills shooting from retention and I was pleasantly surprised. Um, I discovered that it felt no different than when shooting without a compensator in regards to the muzzle blast near the body. Now, I know everyone is going to ask about how much recoil reduction is actually affected. So for that, I purchased a Sony RX0 camera, which can record in 960 frames per second. Um, I then recorded us shooting the gun with and without the carry comp. I also did this with both 124 grain ammo and 147 grain ammo, as that tends to be the bullet weight my carry ammo is provided in. Um, here's that video footage now.
So as you just saw, there's probably about 20 to 30% reduction in recoil, which I'm sure might be even more if you were to use some plus P rounds as they tend to do the best in regards to compensators in my experience. While out on the range, I did some shooting on the move, some build drills from concealment, and I also had Eric run the gun. Uh, we ran about 750 rounds through the gun, and like I said earlier, no issues to report. from concealment first shot 101 I'll take it 281 all clean first shot 158 go one more all clean first shot was a 188 for a total of 330 we had a solid rain session with the barrel and compensator and I'll definitely be running this permanently now that I've been able to put it through the paces um, now I do want to mention a couple of things that I'm not a fan of Honestly, it's purely aesthetics. Um, at $375, the barrel and compensator are priced competitively. I do think it's a little expensive for a barrel and a compensator combo. However, the price is similar among other companies in this market. I was hoping at that price point, the barrel would have some type of milling or some type of machine aesthetic similar to my Zev barrel. Um, so maybe that's something that they'll do in the future. Now I know some of you might think that $375 is overpriced for this combo, and trust me, I hear you on that. Um, however, they are the only ones I know of that make an aftermarket barrel and compensator combo that only extend half an inch past the muzzle. So when you're the only player in the game, you can kind of set the price to whatever you want. Um, in addition to that, they got a 10 week lead time and these things are always out of stock. So that tells you that people are buying them and that they're in demand. So is it worth it? In my opinion, yes, and here's why. First off, the compensator is so small, the footprint isn't affected, which makes carrying this feel the same as without a compensator. The reduction in recoil is noticeable, both felt and visibly. And lastly, installation is innovative and super easy. Now, do you need this compensator to shoot well? The obvious answer is no, guys. But you also don't need a Tesla to get you from point A to point B either. But... It'd be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> If you already shoot really well guys and you're looking to add something to your carry gun then I would definitely check out the Mayhem Syndicate Carry Compensator Mark II. Um, for you guys out there that run your guns a lot, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised when shooting this combo and you'll probably find yourself adding it to your EDC gun. Okay guys, last thing because I know if I don't go over this I'm going to get a bunch of questions in the comments. Um, if you're wondering how we got those slow motion spinning shots, I'll break it down for you right here. We used a product called Selfie Spin 360 which lets you attach a GoPro to a boomerang like platform connected to a rope and a handle. Uh, you hit the record button on your GoPro, you start twirling it in the air at 240 frames per second and you end up with this awesome footage. Um, next thing is what holster was I running? Um, I was running our Wingman Appendix rig that you can purchase on the website. Um, it was set up for my Zev with a Surefire X300 Ultra and the Trigicon SRO Optic. Um, if you guys have any other questions, please leave them down below in the comments for us. We appreciate it. Well guys, that's going to do it. That's all I have for you today. I hope you liked the video. Um, if you did, please give us a thumbs up down below. Um, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing as we post new videos every week. If you wanna support our content, please check out our Patreon link down below. Our Patreon members get first access to new content, new gear, discount codes, and giveaways. Um, they're a big reason why we can continue to create the content that everybody checks out. So we appreciate their support. Thanks again guys for watching and as always, I will see you in the next video. Oh, we're carrying this setup, I should say. The Mayhem Syndicate. Uh, start over. Oh my god. Of course, in the dirt.